sedimentary conglomerates with rounded clasts. Well, what that means is, geologically speaking, they don't belong up here. The rest of this canyon is tertiary rhyolite volcanics, which means the Unsub must have brought these rocks with them. Moral vigilantism typically has its roots in repression and guilt. This generally manifests itself in low self-esteem <laughs> and self-loathing. By punishing others, the Unsub may also be punishing himself. Our killers also emulating the methods of execution at the time of the trials, which is were thrown off cliffs, hung, slowly crushed by rocks. The building blocks of the human personality are complex, varied, and multifaceted. It's essential to one's mental health to want to express these hidden personalities, and it's just a fact of nature that everybody has one. Actually, less than 6% of salt in the United States is used for food. The vast majority of it goes for de-icing roads and snow control. When it's used for torture, it's about complete power and control over the victim. Jeffrey Dahmer fantasized about men, and he poured battery acid in their brains so they couldn't escape. Yeah, with extremely deranged sexual urges, irrational fantasies, and psychopathic tendencies. The eye is the most confined space in the body, which means the camera is probably three to four millimeters long and difficult to see without a microscopic lens. There's a theory about pattern recognition where you don't even have to look at the clues anymore, but I found that going across instead of down helps because the sequence of saccades and fixations in traditional reading assists with other ocular tasks such as solving crossword puzzles. I think so, but DC is the highest concentration of exchange students in the nation, which means we're still looking at tens of thousands. There's something to that. The same genes that develop the iris also shape the frontal lobe, which influences personality. Lobotomies are considered to be the surgery of the soul. Doctors like Walter Freeman claim they could cure a number of mental illnesses, he believed the procedure could relieve suffering. Maybe. A majority of lobotomy patients in the 1940s are mentally ill and resided in state-run institutions. The doctors there felt they were providing mercy to the patients, but the use of the camera tells us that this unsub wants his victims to suffer. It's a classic universal wound, left untreated and combined with the psychopathic urges that trauma led to extreme aggression. 268,581 square miles to be exact. Largest state in the contiguous 48 and the second most populous. Don't mess with Texas. It's called projected cannibalism, and typically cannibalism is a willing choice but the act of forcing someone to engage in it is a form of torture it tells us that the unsub is sadistic and most likely delusional. You know what's odd? Usually in cannibalism, it's the visceral organs and the fleshy parts being eaten, but this unsub is making the victims eat exclusively from the head. True. If you take the fact that our unsub performs four sexual acts with his victims, then add to that the force feeding of a human head and the posed prayer position, I know this sounds crazy, but I think our unsub is obsessed with the praying mantis. That also explains why he poses the victim's hands like this instead of like this. Praying mantis can kill and eat a multitude of creatures, but the most interesting fact is that oftentimes the female mantis engages in sexual cannibalism, meaning she'll bite off the head of her mate once copulation is complete, sometimes even during intercourse, actually. It also explains why he shoots his victims through the heart. Basically, he sees the victims as the praying mantis out to destroy him, so before they can get to him, he rapes them, forces them to engage in cannibalism, thereby taking away their control of the situation. He's essentially walking them through the mating behavior of a captive praying mantis only entirely on his terms. He even mirrors the decapitation of the insect by forcing them to eat pieces of a human head, only it's not a male human head, it's a female human head. After the second shot, it takes the average person one and a half seconds to cognitively process that they're in a potentially life-threatening situation. It takes another 0.7 seconds for a physical response to kick in, by which time the third shot has already been fired. This type of detailed ritualistic behavior typically manifests itself in multiple kills over a short period of time. Schizophrenics are rarely psychopathic. If the twins are predisposed genetically to kill, they didn't get it from their father. His victims at first appeared to be targets of opportunity, but it now appears that one or more of them are targets of choice. The remaining victims are collateral damage to be used as a forensic countermeasure. It's similar to what John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malvo did with the DC sniper case in 2002. Now, it's interesting how much you can tell about a person by what they choose to read. Now, this shelf, for instance, is devoted to Ayn Rand, Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris. You're an atheist. Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, went dormant for 16 years, but later sent letters to the media claiming credit for his crime. Perfectly understandable. The familiar sounds, visual cues, even olfactory inputs can trigger memories and emotions we thought were long gone. Happens to me every time I go home, too. This is the same one, so he must be using another child to make the prank phone calls. The original boy from 15 years ago would be grown up by now. To switch from male child victims to a female adult is highly unusual. The fathers could be the real target of the unsub's rage. You know, the underwear ritual may be about symbolic humiliation. Seeing the American father immigrant mother dynamic must have amplified his negative feelings about his own family. But this sounds similar to a cold case from 15 years ago, Frankie Clavin of Memphis. Frankie Clavin was nine years old at the time. He never made it home from school one day, was found dead in the woods 36 hours later, five miles from his house. I believe they're suffering from an extreme case of Stockholm Syndrome. Much like Patty Hearst, who came to view the SLA as her new family and the rest of the world as adversaries, we believe he's attempting to instill this same feeling within his army. He puts them through a rigorous and punishing military training regimen in order to prepare them mentally and physically for his war. These attacks have been well orchestrated, methodical, and extremely violent in order to maximize destruction and panic. 
There's something known as the magical age between 9 and 12 when a child's psyche is more malleable. That could be why the unsub changed his victimology. Uh, like the child soldiers being recruited by the rebels in Sudan, they lack the physical and emotional maturity to resist their captors. He's likely proven himself a good and cooperative soldier. That submission may have earned him a degree of freedom. Even though he's a soldier, he's still a teenager, so maybe the best way to reach him is through the media. It's possible Daniel has access to a television, maybe even the internet. No, most serial numbers have at least nine digits. He keeps repeating the same five, which means it has some sort of special meaning to the Yun, so maybe it's a military code of some sort? Chicago has over 13,000 police officers. That's roughly 60 per square mile. There were two precincts within a four block radius of the diner. My guess is it was only a matter of time before a cop walked in. Isolation coupled with homicidal ideation would have made him even more reclusive. If the Walter trophies, he could be seeking recognition for his work. Could be recognizing in his victims a behavioral trait consistent with the object of his rage that triggers him to kill. You know, Chicago has one of the largest gang populations with over 100,000 active members. Last year, 61% of all homicides were found to be gang related. Geographically speaking, None of the victims lived near one another, but they were all killed downtown, which is where the unsub likes to operate. His area of control, while relatively small, includes a number of residential and commercial buildings. Factoring in a three mile radius in a city with a population of 636,479 over 48.28 miles, we're looking at approximately 39,549.23 people living in his comfort zone. How many of them male? 18,944.08. Typically, voyeurs are non-violent and content to remain bystanders. This one is different. He's on a mission that includes taking action. Same signature, but the puncture wounds are bigger than the other ones, and they aren't the same distance apart. I think they use a different ice pick. Yeah, barbed wire is actually quite specific, depending on what type of livestock you're trying to keep in and what type of rustlers you're trying to keep out. In this case, the concertina formation was exactly what was used to kill Clark Howard and Matthias Lee. There are microscopic differences in the distances between the wounds. This is not the work of a hay fork or a farming implement. The holes are too small. I think it's most likely an ice pick. The unsubs would have had to stand over the body during the torture. It's, it's actually quite masterful. Add that to the neatness of the crime scene, and I think we're looking for someone with OCD. The precision is astounding. I don't think this is a biting fetish or cannibalism. I think it's a virus, and the biting is merely a means of transmission. There are several possibilities. Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, tick-borne encephalitis, but the most likely culprit is rabies, and that wouldn't show up in an autopsy except in brain tissue. After that, he somehow facilitated human-to-human -human transmission, which also means the holding period isn't about torture, it's about incubation. Yikes. We need to have the ME test for rabies vectors in the brain samples. Rabies has been around since the beginning of documented history. It has the highest case to mortality rate in existence and is arguably the deadliest disease known to man. There is is, but the post-exposure prophylaxis is only effective if administered within 24 hours of infection. Once the symptoms appear, the prognosis is death. He may have found a way to shorten the incubation period. Rabies attacks the nervous system. It, it travels a few millimeters a day until it reaches the brain. But if you were to infect the area around the head or the neck, the distance would be shortened. He may be some sort of symphorophiliac. A rabies death is apparently quite the spectacle. There are convulsions, spasms, then the madness sets in, along with uncontrollable salivation, which accounts for the foaming at the mouth we all associate with the disease. One of the cruelest ironies of all is the extreme dehydration caused by hydrophobia. Victims have a visceral fear response to liquid of any sort. Add to that confusion, hallucinations, and you can probably imagine the horror. The acquisition of the virus may have been the trigger itself. It's worth mentioning, the only known rabies survival story that didn't involve the vaccine happened right here in Milwaukee. A 15-year-old girl survived the virus and doctors put her in a medically induced coma. Actually, bats make up 12% of Wisconsin's mammalian population and they're responsible for the majority of the infections in the U.S. Could be a deity symbol. In a Japanese book from the year 712 called Kojiki, the scarecrow is seen as a symbol of someone who knew everything in the world. The female victims had signs of sexual assault while the male did not. That means the rapes are situational. He also knew where to stab the victims without killing them right away. Two out of ten isn't a countdown at all. I think he might be referring to a hobo code. Exactly, it means two eyes on ten fingers because thieves are present. The code was devised during the Great Depression by hobos to help each other out. None of the victims had a documented address, so it's likely they were homeless. They may have known each other from the street or from a shelter. He will attempt to surround himself with people who are subservient, either sycophantic followers or people who are trapped by financial constraints. This isn't drinking water, it's contaminated with ground pollutants, like stormwater runoff. My guess would be the flood control tunnels beneath the city. There are at least 1,500 people who live in the flood control tunnels. It's a crossroads of the destitute. Ex-cons, drug addicts, hardcore gamblers. Some of the tunnels will flood when there's just a 15-minute storm up in the mountains. It's the tricky part. There are 413 miles of them. Based on where the victims were last seen alive, plus the most accessible locations in the tunnels, I've narrowed down the two most likely sections they stayed in. They're 22 miles apart. Down here, uh, nearest tunnel access point is C16. That's 30 miles from our other location. It's an anagram for James Braid. He was a Scottish surgeon in the 1800s, considered to be the father of hypnosis. Neurolinguistic programming, I use sensory predicates and keywords to tap into his unconscious mind. There are two different exits into the desert. One's on the north end and the other's on the west. 
He murdered them months apart, but buried them all in the exact same spots. So the disposal site's obviously important to him. The red markers indicate where the victims lived, except of course for Rudy Hightower, who was homeless. The blue markers indicate where they were last seen alive, and this is the disposal site. We should also consider cannibalism. Maybe he doesn't require large portions of flesh to satiate his urges. Most ritual cannibalism involves the consumption of particular organs as a means to commune with the deceased. Inside therapy is also known as psychodynamic therapy. It helps patients rediscover what motivates them in an effort to resolve old conflicts. Cell tower range and directionality can be dramatically influenced by atmospheric, electromagnetic, and traffic capacity variations. Meaning? A cell phone can travel to the same location but ping off of different towers on different days due to independent outside variables. G Garcia, can you see what's at this intersection point? Not knowing what happened to your child would be the ultimate torture for any parent. That's what the people involved are calling it. They're also referring to it as rehoming, and it's been happening underground for some time now. Good people go on the site looking for guidance or services, but bad people offer to take problem kids off their hands as a last resort. Last year, Las Vegas documented 39,727,022 visitors. There are 93 hotels in Las Vegas, 260 motels and inns, 1,500 bars and 2,996 restaurants, not to mention nearby Summerlin, which is growing in popularity. It's odd given the fact that 80% of crimes against women involve some sort of sexual component. Like Carla Hamalco and Paul Bernardo, who raped, tortured, and killed at least 19 people, this couple's homicidal tendencies most likely surfaced once they met. Learning the nature of how that differs from their team dynamic will be the key to driving a wedge between their partnership. Maybe she lasted the longest? If his ritual dictates a specific timeline, any new aspect would fall later in his routine. But his real nature would be revealed in the safety of isolation. Uh, this is the type of man who would anonymously express himself online, uh, raging against how these women are filled with disease and filth, how they deserve what's coming to them, uh, probably to cover for the rejection of a woman or spouse who's wronged him. A wound collector is someone who uses a lifetime of slights, grievances, and wrongs as justification for violence. Examples can be as large scale as Hitler scapegoating the Jews for the Holocaust. You know, the symbolism really runs the gamut. Pigs can stand for anything from greed and laziness to celebration and good luck, not to mention the derogatory nickname for cops. Like Los Angeles cop killer Christopher Dorner, injustice collectors believe they've been dealt a lifetime of unfairness and believe that nobody treats them with the respect they deserve. Guys, I did a geographic profile of the victims and it turns out they all lived or work in the same 2.65 square mile radius in the north part of the city. These pieces of twine are all different lengths. I think it's by design. Uh, starting with the first victim, the lengths are 25, 15, 12, and 19 inches. Yeah, so what? If you convert inches to centimeters, you're left with 64, 38, 31, and 48, the exact ages of all four victims. In Greek mythology, a person's destiny was in the hands of the three fates. Uh, one to spin the thread of life, another to measure the thread, and finally Atropos, the one who cut the thread with shears at the moment of death. It's a conflict in M.O. Uh, the cutting and restraints points to sexual sadism, but the gunshot wound ends the torture too quickly for a sadist. I'm playing the same principles using speed reading. I minimize subvocalization of the images and reduce cognitive load. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, like, and comments for updates.